Well, hello, friends out there in YouTube land and Patreon on Instagram and Twitter. I'm Robert Ham with Robert Ham Photography. You see, that's my name. <laughs> it's a little bit of fun. Today, I want to share with you a little bit of information about the new Fujifilm Instax camera, the Instax Square, the SQ10. And I have to tell you, I'm a little bit concerned about this. So, if you're ready, let's get started. Over here recently, you can see I've been putting up quite a few different videos. The last four videos I've made on YouTube have been about my excitement for the Fujifilm Mini 90, specifically their Instax film. I think it's a great ISO 800 film. And if you wanna know more about that, you're welcome to go check those out right there. So why am I not so excited about Fujifilm's new Instax Square camera when people like Digital Trends or The Verge are claiming that it's going to be the instant camera for the future. Here we go, young or old, Fujifilm Instax SQ10 is the instant camera everybody will want, according to Digital Trends. Fujifilm over here with Engadget, we're saying it's half digital, half instant. So what is going on? Well, I'll tell you why. First of all, Fuji did a great job coming out with a new format, they recognized that uh, people like the one by one aspect ratio. I think that the actual film itself looks great and that excites me. So I'm happy that Fuji, as a pioneer in the industry, did something different. They came out with this square camera. Now, it's not all doom and gloom. I think that this may be the consumer model of this camera. However, if this is the only camera that Fuji is coming out, if this, if this is their toe in the water camera, then they have got a big swing and a miss, mainly because calling this half digital, half analog, like we saw on The Verge recently, is kind of a misnomer, mainly because this camera is fully digital. The specifications for this camera are right down here, and it uses a one quarter inch CMOS filter with primary color filter. They're not even using an X-Trans sensor. They're not using their proprietary technology, they're using a bare arranged filter, which means they just picked up a one quarter inch, probably Sony, maybe Sharp or Samsung sensor, but that's it. And it's got an effective resolution of 1920 by 1920. That doesn't really matter so much because the print is small, but you see what I'm saying is that there is no camera obscura. There's no part for the film to be exposed. This is a digital printer like this share printer that has a digital sensor slapped on top of it. And that's a problem. That's a problem because that's not analog anything. The only thing analog is the film, and the film's not even exposed like an analog print would be. And that's an important thing to think about. When you're using something like the Mini 90, this camera right here, you'll notice that the lens actually extends. Even with the Lomography cameras, there is a place in the back where the film goes as a package, as a cartridge, that you can actually see straight through in the lens, just like you would see when you're using a regular 35 millimeter camera. That part that is where the f in front of the film and behind the lens, that space is called the camera obscura, and that's where the actual lens does its focusing. Today, on mirrorless cameras or digital cameras, we call that a flange distance. However, that's a an important part of what gives analog photography signature char characteristic and look. Don't give this halfway Instax experience, this is your only Instax camera of your modern Instax cameras that has abandoned the analog feel of what made the character of your Instax photos better. This is what made your cameras and the Instax film that other people have used better. Lomography's tried to beat you, and they can't. It's because you've created a beautiful lens on a great camera. Heck, even Leica licensed you to make their Sofort camera, which uses your same lens that you use in the Mini 90. Fuji, why did you make this diabolical thing that doesn't give the consumer that experience? You worked so hard to create an instant film that was relevant today through technology of lens, through the creation of a good camera, a working body that was easy to use for anybody. And now you slap a digital sensor in it and think that people will get that same Instax feeling? I don't think so. I don't think so at all. In fact, I say this is a don't buy. So guys, we're gonna wrap this up. The reality is I think Fuji's got a big swing and a miss. I think that if you want the Instax square, but what you're really interested in is not the format of a square, instant print, but just an instant print. If that's what you're looking to get into, you should come right over here, get the Instax Share 2, come right over here, 
by the 8 gigabyte iFi card if you've got a DSLR or a mirrorless camera that you want to use. If you don't, you don't have to buy anything else because you can sync the photos from your phone directly to this with the Instax app. So look at that. See? You don't need this. You don't need a camera, a digital printer with a camera lens stuck to it. All you need is your phone camera, which is better than the lens on that Instax Square, and this app with this Instax Share printer, and you can be up and running for 150 bucks. Save yourself $130 from what Fuji wants to sell this for, and go ahead and get the Instax app. You'll have access to everything that the Fujifilm Instax Square 10 would give you. Multiple portraits, dual exposures, adjusting contrast, black and white, different color filters. You'll have access to all of that in the Instax app. And you won't have to carry around this camera to do it. And you'll enjoy it. Guys, if you can't tell, Fuji got me hot. They created this thing, which I'm, I'm sad to say is a swing and a miss, Fuji. I hope this was your April Fool's joke for us because you could have stepped it up. This is a miss. And the worst part is you've been leading this technology. But I have faith in you. Don't let me down. Guys, I'm Robert Ham with roberthamphotography.com. Catch me over on Twitter, Instagram, at Rob Ham Photo. Find me on YouTube, of course, right here. And as always, catch you on the flip side.